Good everyone, and welcome to today's video. And today it's a spade review on the squadron vehicle, the Firecrest. Now straight away, I knew this thing wasn't going to be the well, very good, and I was right to predict that. It's it's not exactly the best vehicle in War Thunder. However, I'm sort of glad that Gaijin have done it in this way. Um, the Firecrest obviously is a British. Well, it it claims to be a fighter. It isn't a fighter. It certainly doesn't handle like a fighter. The raw rate's good. I, I will say that the raw rate is good. But otherwise, I think this thing serves better as a Grand Panda. The only problem is, and this is going to sound very funny to some U UK players or British players. The Firebrand is actually better. I know the the Firebrand, the Brit, the freaking, oh, the Blackburn Firebrand is actually better than this thing. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, it gets better guns. This thing only gets two thirty or well, fifty caliber machine guns, and three fifty caliber machine guns with just six hundred rounds. They go quick. I can assure you that they go quick. Um, in terms of ordnance, you only get access to two five hundred pound bombs. A single torpedo, which I never got to use, and eight rockets, which for some reason guys are that lazy when it comes to um, the actual naming of the weapons. They appear to be using what looks like CSS script to name it weapons slash UK underscore RP3 underscore three times eight. Yeah, that's a bit lazy, guys, and you might want to get around to that. Um, it's either CSS script, it's Python, or it's probably something in Unity, I don't know. But um, overall, the Firecrest has a pretty strong engine. It's powered by Bristol Centaurus, and it's actually quite a quite strong engine. But, it, but for me to say the Firebrand is better, this thing must have some critical weaknesses. First of all, the cooling. It basically has none. This thing does not like to cool down. The engine just overheats like crazy. The oil does as well. That's even with the radiator upgrade. The guns, as I said, they run out really quickly. And they just don't work that well. I mean, they, they do just some damage. I will say that. They do damage. But they're just not that great. The engine itself, obviously, 2,775 horsepower. And this thing's bigger than a P-47 from what I can work out. And yet, it, it's... Well, she's big. But I think even the P-47 flies better. Even with a full payload. This thing cannot turn for shit. That is being generous. And it just doesn't handle maneuvers that well. I mean, the raw rate, as I said, is actually pretty good. It's get It's got dive brakes, so you can... Do a bit of dive the bombing if you ever feel like it, or dive rocket attacks. It can do it. But like I say though, where's the old firebrand? There he is. For me to say this thing's better, you know you've got a problem with your aircraft. And again, guys are being lazy. But um for me to say the firebrand is better, that's when you know something's up. The reason for me saying the Firebrand's better is because of these cannons. The Mark V Espanos, it gets an extra pair of two, 250 pound bombs. And just overall, the, the Firebrand can carry better payloads like 1,000 pound bombs. With the Firecrest, you don't get that. But for my recommended, grand, well, my recommended armament setup, obviously, there's a choice of three, and I went with Grand Targets. Universal. Grand targets and tracer. You can run stealth, but I don't advise stealth because I need a low ammo count, and sometimes you might not be used to the M3s. Um, tracers I've only used once, and I got an air kill. Grand targets is what I use for most of the spade, and universal I only, I only use once. Grand targets probably 400 to 500 meters convergence, if that, because the guns are quite. I mean, they're quite close to the wing route, but even then, I think a low gun convergence is advised, considering I'm going to be recommending you guys to Grandpa with this thing. Don't use this thing as a fighter. That's all I'm saying. It isn't very good. So what about my stats in the vehicle? Well, I had a pretty alright time. 13 air kills, 99 grand targets, 11 deaths. 
one of which was actually a team kill. Um, James, being James, decided to bring his P-59 in. I fired my rockets jokingly at him on the runway, killed him. And some retard and a sea fire came back and team killed me for it for some reason, even though he clearly knew he was in the squadron. I have no idea why he did, but whatever. Most of my deaths were from denying retards who decide to scream down and go for, well, there's no other word for it, easy frags. Specifically P-47 hit the bolts. You tend to see them doing that a lot. But otherwise this thing isn't too bad. But it's the ammo count, and you'll see what I mean in this battle. This was nearly a 25 minute game, but don't worry, I'm going to be compressing it. You do get an air spawn of interceptor, but pff, this thing's no interceptor. I can assure you that. It's just this plane is not that good. It just doesn't feel that great. And for, like I say, the firebrand is better. So if you are going to go down to squadron vehicles, leave this thing till last. I recommend going for the 262 or even the Wally. The little thing that looks like Wally. If you don't know what I'm on about, just look up the M901 or M801 or whatever it's called. Now, James, obviously, being James, he wants to make a cameo appearance like bloody Stan Lee. Obviously, he does have his own channel, so do remember to go and give him a look and all that. I'll, I'll probably leave a link in the description below. If not, he'll leave a comment. So, do remember to go and check him out. I mean, he's started off, he's gotten a couple of videos up. Tell him from me, he needs to work on his thumbnails. But, um... <laughs> But um, yeah, it's going it's it's going okay from so far. He's had a couple of views, but obviously he's starting off, and it's not going particularly well for him. I mean, he's getting there eventually, but even so. So there's the dive brakes. Obviously, they come out both on or underneath and on top of the wing. They're actually pretty good. I mean, they keep the firecrest from turning or diving too hard. There you can see the roll rate in action is actually pretty good. The, like I say, the roll rate is good. I do like the roll rate. And there's the guns, rattling off. You don't get a lot of gun time, so just bear that in mind. I think at this point I retract the air brakes. Rockets away, and that's my first kill on a pillbox at least. Now remember, you only get eight rockets, so that's four salvos of rockets. So just bear that in mind. So, grand target kill. Another rocket salvo. Fourth grand target kill. At this point, James has a heart attack because he spots a Boris coming out of his head. In fact, no, I think that is Dimitri, his free loading cousin. Because it's the IL-2M Type 3. I would call it Boris, but because it's not the premium version, I'm going to call it Dimitri. Harry Feetan will no doubt correct me because he, he names his planes quite a bit. Like um, the HS129, he calls the he calls it Mr. Quackers. That's a quacking name there, mate. Um, Anun Aki on the enemy team has got um, a Boris, so that's always nice. You saw a TO2 in the background over there, and James is actually losing power, if I remember rightly. He is going down. I, I think the IL-2's gunner took out his engine or something, I can't quite remember. Or he's he's just struggling in general. And here comes an LA-5. I let obviously James know, because we're on Discord, because, well, he, he, for some reason he loves to beg for me to fly with him for some reason, I don't know why. But, um, he obviously, he's, he's cleaning up a couple of ground targets himself. And I'm obviously going ham with the rockets and the guns and everything. The elevator authority on this aircraft is alright, but it could be better. The turn rate, as you can see, is pretty below average. It it doesn't like doing these sorts of maneuvers. From what I've been able to find in terms of history on this aircraft, only three were built and they weren't used at all. <laughs> they were used in testing, from what I can find, and even then that's not much of a career. 
but for me to say the Firebrand is better, and he even said on Wikipedia and a few other sources I found that the Firebrand was deemed better, that's when you know your aircraft's a bit of a bad design. That's another rocket kill. The RP-3s are very good rockets. I really do like using RP-3 rockets. Like I say, when I was spading the British 4347 lineup in tanks, I used a firebrand. And I'm glad I didn't wait for this thing to use it because I'd have been disappointed. I mean, it has seen some good service in Grand RB, with the bombs at least. And this is where I pull up for a cheeky shot at this LA-5. I said to James, because obviously James just died. I said, eh, I'll have a crack at him. And, well, the gun's ripping the bits, which is rather surprising since I was running ground target ammunition. But they have good am this thing does have good ammo belts. But you don't get a lot of ammunition. That's the main drawback. You don't get a lot of ammunition. You get very limited ordnance options, such as the rockets, the bombs and all that. It got so bad where me and James had to actually double team a base. He brought in his BTD. He bombed it first and then I finished it off. That that's how bad it got because I was planning to I was on Korea and we basically had to tag team a base. Which was pretty funny. And well, there's a, there's one other thing I forgot to mention in the hangar about this aircraft. It has no armor. I don't know what the hell happened there, that's a replay bug. That was an artillery piece. But, um... Like I say, we had to tag team a base, and... It just... It got to the point where I was actually considering Spain and this aircraft in tank hub B. That's how bad it got. But, as we got towards the end, and here comes Boris coming to chase my ass. I'm obviously out of ammunition at this point, and Boris is looking hungry. He's... He's beginning to chase, but if there's one thing the Firecrest has over the IL-2, it's speed. This thing can get up to good speeds on the deck. I was able to average around 300 miles an hour for the most part. I believe in this battle I was almost spaded. Obviously, you can see Boris, he's hungry, he is chasing, but I'm outrunning him. That's the one thing this Firecrest can do, it can pick up speed rather nicely and it can maintain it around 300. It's because of that Bristol Centaurus engine. This thing may be massive, but it can get up to speed because of that engine power. So, let's skip ahead, because, well, this is a long battle, folks. 24 minutes, 48 seconds. This is a long battle. Landing this plane, if you've ever landed the Firebrand, you've landed this aircraft. It feels very similar to the Firebrand to land. Landing speed's about the same. Takeoff speed's about the same, flap and gear usage is about the same. So just just land it like a firebrand. If you've never flown a firebrand, then well, take this thing into a test flight. You're not missing much on this aircraft. I didn't deem this thing to be too important to spade. That's why I left it a few weeks when I got the thing. Obviously it's squadron. My current research project on the squadron vehicles is the... Don't worry, I didn't fly through that pillbox, and even did I do that one, it's just a replay bug. Um, my one at the moment is the 262. I do want to get my hands on that 262. Um, then it will be back to Wally. And here comes the anti-aircraft gun, he actually sets me on fire. And this is where I panic fire all the rockets, thinking, I'm taking you with me. But the fire actually goes out. This thing does have self sealing fuel tanks. They're not very good ones, but they work somewhat okay. I'd have a grand target popped, and I'm just thinking, do I go for that B-25? Because the B-25's got pretty good defensive armament. But you can see there's just damage all over this aircraft, and it's just because of these overpowered AAA guns. I wouldn't want to be in something like a Boris and have this sort of thing happening to me, because the IL-2 flies like a brick most of the time if you're doing ground pounding. As a fighter, the Boris works really nicely, and so does Dimitri. But you've just got to bear in mind that you're in an aircraft with no armor plating. This thing has none. No bulletproof glass, no pilot protection, no nothing. It has no protection for the, the crew, or the crewmen, 
it, that is the pilot, because the singers AS are pilot. And it's just, this plane's not the best. And obviously I'm taking more damage from this AAA. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised this thing even made it home with the amount of hits this thing took. Obviously I'm clearing up 24 grand targets at the moment. And I'm leaking oil, I'm leaking fuel quite heavily. And this thing's still flying, it can take a beating if it has to. It is a tough aircraft. It's just that lack of armor plating for the pilot is really going to affect you. So at this point I'm down to very little MG ammo and at that point I just ran out. So, back to base again. Let's get on that merry way. Obviously because of the damage and the oil leak, this thing lost a lot of speed so... It can maintain about 250 miles an hour for the most part, even when damaged, but... This aircraft is just not very good in the majority of aspects. It can't dogfight well. Well, well at all. In fact, I'd have bets on the IL-2 if this thing was in a dogfight with one of those. Um, most of my air kills were on ground attackers because, well, they got in my gun sight. I did have a few fighter kills and things like that. Obviously, the LA-5 was one of them. But for the most part, this thing just didn't do that well. The 50 cals can take out pillboxes on their own as well and for some reason that one was a hit. Yeah it was a direct hit. I don't understand why. But um, like I say this aircraft can work. It's just I think it's a bit too unrewarding for a squadron vehicle. Because I think this thing's like 180,000 RP in squadron vehicle, I can't remember, it's been a while since I researched it. But, I just think this aircraft is not worth your time. I think you're just better off using the Firebrand. Because in this scenario, if I was in the Firebrand, I would be able to both attack ground targets and defend myself much better than this thing can. Simply due to the Firebrand's 20mm cannon. Because this thing, I mean, yeah, the 50 cals can work, but you don't get a lot of ammunition. At least with the Firebrand, you get 800 rounds between four cannons, which do a heck of a lot more damage. And you can ground pan a lot better with those 20 movement cannons. And with the Firebrand being able to carry bigger bombs, you can even hit a base and help your team out. With this, you can't. So you can sort of see why. So coming up to my final contribution to the battle, these vehicles, and well, Gaijin's placement of these vehicles is actually quite hilarious. You'll see what I mean, they're just buried in the, the mountain. And I'm just like, why would Gaijin do that? It's like, bruh. But for some reason, and I broke my, frap, or broke my flaps, these things flaps do not last long in a turn, you do not want to drop your flaps at about 300 miles an hour, they'll just break off immediately. Of course, the Spitfire pilot has to come in and try and leech some kills from me. So he comes in, even though he's going to go chase the TU2. He pops that one, but he left one standing. And that final vehicle there is going to be the last one that I get for this game in terms of grand kills. What the replay doesn't show is that I had two pairs of rockets left, ready to be used against the base, but I didn't get there in time. But like I say, the Firecrest can work, it's just the Firebrand's better. So if you're a collector, do get this aircraft, but if you're not, I wouldn't waste your time. But it can work, like I say. But anyway, I'll let you guys off, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the Firecrest, and I will see you all on the next one.